Hey guys, Vol here as usual, and uh, I'm actually playing some poker, as you can see here on Poker Stars. Poker is a game that I first heard about a number of years ago when I got involved with uh, Team Liquid's StarCraft tournament that was hosted by PokerStrategy.com, which is with this website here. And um, their big thing is that they give you some starting credit to use if you join up to their poker school. Uh, the catch is that they don't tell you that um, the $50 of starting credit or whatever it is uh, is only given to you in increments of $10 and you actually have to sort of play through for it and pass a lot of quizzes and things. So there are, <laughs> there are a few hurdles. Anyway, I didn't get into poker until um, maybe sometime after I got off StarCraft and I was getting interested in watching online poker, not so much online poker, sorry, um, getting into watching poker that was televised, say on YouTube or on, um, on videos. Really got interested in a um, million dollar cash game followed by, um, what was it, Poker After Dark, High Stakes Poker, the PCA stuff, Aussie Millions. And um, because I so enjoyed watching the pros like Phil Ivey, Tom Dwan, Phil Helmuth, uh, David Negreanu, I decided to learn how to play the game because I wanted to understand what the commentators were saying and what the players were doing on screen and um, came to learn that it was a game that I understood and that I might actually be able to do okay at if I put a lot of effort into it. So originally started practicing um, online in the micro stakes like I am doing right here and um, getting into it. Got off it after a while, went back into Wargaming, now I'm back uh, with a bit more poker these days, and over the last few months I've really been uh, getting into it a lot more. Playing some live poker, I'll get back, back to that in a minute, but um, online I play on Poker Stars. I've tried some of the other poker rooms out as well. Um, had a friend who recommended Poker Stars in particular, and uh, it's basically linked to your PokerStrategy.com account here, and you can actually have access to some more of the articles and things if you accumulate points from playing on these sites. The main idea is that um, because I'm a newer player, I'm less experienced, I'm playing at the micro limits. That's where the blinds are one cent and two cent, you buy in for two dollars. Now, it's not as if I can't afford to buy in for ten dollars or more than that in the higher stakes, but the point is that it's about your capabilities, it's about being able to beat or outplay other people who are at that particular limit. And because I'm a newer player, often I'll get outplayed by somebody else. Um, because I'll make a mistake. Now, you know, in real life, you know, I'm spending maybe 10 bucks a day on lunch so I can afford to play in the high limits, but I would not have much of a chance against people that, you know, played way, way better poker than I would. So that's why I'm teaching myself and practicing at the lower limits. And um, one thing I've steadily seen is a bit of an, a bit of an improvement slowly reading articles, watching you know more of the televised poker stuff and analyzing my play and seeing what I did wrong and trying to avoid making those mistakes in future. have been playing live action uh, poker as well. There's a local game I go to every week, uh, $20 buy-in, that's a more, of a more of a tournament situation. Won that a couple of times, so Probably at that particular um, that particular environment, I've won more than I've lost, just given that the the payout at the end of the tournament is more uh, over a while. Um, had the luxury of playing in a few uh, $100 buy-in games, where really that was more for the experience of it. Really enjoyed those games. Didn't make much money at all. In fact, I lost money. Um, but it was great to sort of see what other players were doing. It was with other friends who were willing to, to bet that amount, so a bit of a gamble, really. Um, also getting involved with a $40 buy-in game where it's some mixed styles, like Omaha and um, Dealer's Choice sort of stuff. But yeah, um, the thing about poker is that compared to something else that I've tried, strategy game-wise, like, I don't know, uh, StarCraft and, and, and War Machine and so forth, a great chunk of the field that you're up against in those games are casual players who really um, don't pose too much of a threat if you've actually done the hard yards learning how to play the game and actually playing in a competitive way. With poker, if you go into a competitive setting, I'm not talking about sort of your local home games with people that you know just want to gamble money, if you go to a competitive place with it with its tournaments and there's money involved, um, it's very hard because poker is played by millions and millions of people and it's been a worldwide thing for a long time now. It's a very mathematical game and it, of course it involves real money so you can expect to run into some really tough competition. So my expectations and my aspirations um, at this stage are not particularly high. 
what I want to focus on is improving and actually playing correctly and reaching you know a decent standard of play. There's a reason why you don't really want to make it your goal to simply achieve you know that financial success and recognition from other players. Your goal shouldn't be that. Your goal should be to focus on making the right decisions, figuring out what to do in each case, and coming up with a solution. One thing that I've, I've learnt um, over the last few months, and I think this is really important, is, uh, is what will happen if you, if you don't have that as a goal. And I thought I'd just tell a story about, or make an example about um, that which really illustrates the situation, and that is, if you imagine, and, and by the way, this, this is directed to people who are new to the game like me, um, people that play a little bit of poker but not that much, imagine you go to a, a, a tournament uh, at a casino perhaps once a month, and your goal is simply to make as much money as you can and to get recognition from other players. Well, suppose you go along and you start playing your hands and you're folding a lot of uh, weak hole cards and uh, you're waiting for the ideal spot to actually you know, bet some money and you come across a pair of kings, which is a great hand, so of course you value bet pre-flop and maybe somebody calls you. Then the flop comes and it's not a dangerous flop, you put in some more money, you, know, you get called by somebody else that maybe has ace-10 or something like that, maybe the flop comes 10-7 deuce, great, and then there's an ace on the turn. Well, there are a lot of cards that have could have hands that could have called you pre-flop and on the turn, like ace-10, or similar hands that involved an ace, like ace-queen, ace-jack, or even ace with, a weak kick, ace with a weak kicker, but you actually have to fold there being the smarter player because it's highly likely that the player has an ace, in which case you're beaten, and you, of course you lose money, even though you played correctly up until that point, and even until that point you played it correctly. So, carrying on with that, let's say you continue folding cards that aren't really playable, you don't really want to lose money to loose players making weak calls, and then it comes around to you on the big blind and everybody's checked or called around to you and you happen to flop a full house. Fantastic, you might be able to get some value. And let's say you do make the correct bet sizes, you do value bet, you do, you know, isolate, um, you know, hands that might have hit the, the flop. And let's say you you make a bet that isn't called, that is folded against because the other guy just simply didn't have enough to continue and you fail to extract value because, you know, as luck had it, the other guy didn't really have any cards at all. So, unfortunate. You continue to fold cards throughout that session, and perhaps with maybe a bit of a shorter stack, you come to a situation where you have two aces. Great opportunity to double up. So you bet correctly pre-flop. Somebody raises you, you re-raise them. It goes to an all-in pre-flop, which is exactly what you want with aces. But the other guy has, you know, called you with two jacks. Well, the chances of you beating two jacks with two aces is very, very good. But there's still quite a significant likelihood that one of the cards you know, of the remaining five could be a jack and no ace comes. And let's say that does happen, unfortunately for you, and you're felted, you're busted, you lose all of your chips in that tournament situation and can't continue. So following that session, if you compare that to your goal of you know, making as much money as you can and getting recognition from other players, you certainly didn't have achieved that and you're in danger of really being quite hard on yourself, beating yourself up because you failed in that sense. But let's say you're an emotionally stable person, you're not going to let that get to you and you're not tilted by that, so you go to the tournament the following month and similar things happen, maybe you get sucked out in the river and something goes wrong and you play very, very well, but again, with variance, um, you just don't manage to make it. Well, what happens there is that you're in danger of that affecting you psychologically and most players will actually start to really feel like they need to catch up, they need to actually play more aggressively or less aggressively and just not make the correct decisions. Whereas if your goal after those sessions or before those sessions rather was to figure out what to do, make the right decision, come up with a solution, you can reward yourself at the end of each session by saying, hey look, I achieved that goal, I managed to play correctly, I'm achieving what I wanted to and that's something that's really important, that's something I've actually had to hold on to because as I've improved at poker, although I've had you know some swings of good and bad luck, um, just lately, um, although I've actually improved my game, I've gotten better at it, I've had a run of bad luck even on those hands and those, those, those situations where I've actually played it correctly. But um, really enjoying poker and um, I'm really keen to improve, so I'm going to try out some you know, poker software, read some more articles on poker strategy, and hopefully get in touch with people that are willing to um, you know, help me out with the analysis side of things. Maybe even if you want to play me at poker, that'll be fun. Um, at the moment, I'm Vol SC, as you can see here in the um, 
under the gun position on this table. Sometimes I play multi-table at poker, but I'm recording a video right now, so it's only the one table just to show you guys what's going. But I would like to uh, do some poker videos in future um, if I can actually record some decent hands to talk about and put them on YouTube for those of you who are interested. Um, as usual, uh, whenever I switch between game systems and stop doing you know, one lot of games and do another, then I lose viewers and pick up other ones, but I probably still will post some more machine videos. Posting videos on YouTube generally is quite time-consuming, and of course my other hobby at the moment is writing my novel, which I'm three quarters of the way through. So hopefully you guys uh, got something out of this. Um, hopefully there are a few of you who do follow poker or enjoy it um, that will actually follow me this, in this journey, and um, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll start posting videos, maybe not, but um, that will remain to be seen. Hey, we'll catch you guys later.